from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents the Daily TV Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, and with your spirit. spirit. Welcome to the celebration of this daily televised Mass. I am Father Michael Coots. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from Elizabeth Joseph from Rochester Hills, Michigan. This Mass is being offered for a special intention. We know that the televised Mass has been bringing comfort and consolation to Canadians all across this land and across the world. And they join me in thanking Elizabeth Joseph for the gift of this Mass. And as we celebrate this Mass in the octave of Easter, we ask the God of mercy and compassion to extend the Spirit down upon all of us. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, and we are sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. We praise God as we say, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Almighty, ever-living God, who gave us the Paschal mystery in the covenant you established for reconciling the human race, so dispose our minds that we may celebrate by professing the faith we may express indeed through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Act of the Apostles. While Peter and John were speaking to the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came to them, much annoyed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming that in Jesus there is the resurrection of the dead. So they arrested them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. But many of those who heard the word believed, and they numbered about 5,000. The next day, their rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas and high priests, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if they are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who is sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under the heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Stone rejected by the build. 
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his steadfast love endures forever. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The stone rejected by the builders has become Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given a slight. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. And they said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many, so ma so many fish. That, that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, 
about 90 meters. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. And Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. Now this was the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he had been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Our first reading takes place after Pentecost. The Gospel takes place after the resurrection, but before Pentecost. And since the Holy Spirit had come down on the apostles to Peter and the rest of them, they did what Jesus had mandated them, go out and proclaim the good news. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And they also fulfilled the other mandate, go out and heal, whether it was the lame, the blind, the cripple, forgive sins, and sins were forgiven. Now don't jump to the conclusion that the apostles were sitting down in little confessionals and people were lining up just like they are lining up for vaccines today, waiting to make their confession. The whole sacrament of reconciliation came many centuries later. And we remember St. Ignatius of Loyola when he was going from Vienna to, uh, from Venice to uh, Jerusalem, made his confession to a fellow traveler. So let's not get into that business of how their sins were forgiven. Safe to know it was. So the apostles were gathered out in the marketplaces and the synagogues and proclaimed the good news. They were preaching. And as the saying goes, all hell broke loose. They were arrested, they were put in prison, and they were brought before those with power, with privilege, and with prestige. They were the Pharisees on one side, the learned sect who had authority over everything. They knew the tradition, they knew the Torah, they knew the law and how to interpret it. And on the other side, they were the Sadducees. The Sadducees were basically priests. They were supposed to preach the word of God. They were supposed to offer sacrifices. And so who were these upstarts that came and started preaching in the marketplace, in the synagogues, and in the temple courtyard? 2,000 years later, we fall in the same category. Heaven help us if anybody but an ordained minister gets into the pulpit and preaches. And yet, by our very baptism, we are called to be priests, prophets, and king. We are called to proclaim the good news. And everybody does that. In my own life, my number one proclaimer, or number four proclaimers, who were proclaimers A double plus, was my mother and her three sisters, Cecilia, Lena, and Rose. They taught me how to pray. They taught me to call God Abba, Father. They showed me the importance of prayer by the way they spent their own life. They taught me the importance of forgiving. I'm super sensitive and things hurt me, and therefore it would come up again and again like uh, repeating itself like garlic or onions. And so every time I would hear that hurt, I would have to forgive again. They taught me that never to go to bed with anger in my heart or a resentment towards somebody else. They taught me respect for life. They didn't go out and placade with against abortion or any of that stuff, but they showed how they treated pregnant people with respect and encouraged them and supported them. They showed me love for life from the womb to the tomb. But most of all, they showed me that when God calls, there is no turning back. 
when God calls, as we heard in the responsorial psalm, the love of the, God, of the Lord is steadfast, and therefore we too have to be steadfast. Coming to the gospel, we seem to have forgotten that these apostles were turning back. Jesus had gone, and so they go out fishing. And while they are in fishing, they have caught nothing the whole night. And suddenly there's a stranger on the shore saying, you've caught nothing, have you? Lower your nets onto the other side. And Peter must have scratched his head and said, I've heard that voice before, and I've heard that same call before. And he must recall the Lake of Galilee close to Magdala, where Jesus said, launch into the deep, duck into al an altum. Peter, who had gone back to his fishing, without forgetting, forgetting the words Jesus had said, he who puts his hand to the plow and turns back is not worthy of the kingdom. Now, for the second time he is called, he leaves his catch and he leaves his means of catching his boat and he follows Jesus. You and I have been called to do the same thing. What is your boat? What is your catch of fish? Each one has got a different explanation and a different thing to let go so that we can follow Jesus without turning back. God bless you all. As we pray together, let us pray for this faith community as they journey along the road and for the troubles and worries and joys that they have. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sponsor, Elizabeth Joseph from Michigan, and for her intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all of us may be filled with this Easter joy and that we may impart it by proclaiming the good news. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we offer you these our prayers through Christ, the risen Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Through the mystery of this wine and water, may we share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Lord God, be pleased to accept these gifts that we offer to you with humble and with contrite hearts. Pray, my sisters, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and all his holy church. Perfect within us, O Lord, the solemn exchange brought about by these paschal offerings, that we may be drawn from earthly desires to a longing for things in heaven. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all time, to acclaim you, O Lord, but during this time, above all, to praise you for yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death. By rising, he restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the hymn of your glory as they acclaim. in the name of the
are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, the bishops across Canada, and this entire people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, Peter and Thomas and Nathaniel and the sons of Zebedee, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. With your Wherever we are, offer a sign of peace and the joy of Easter.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, those whom you have saved by your kindness that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. Sung, Alleluia.